So hello everybody from King Fahad University, Saudi Arabia. Thanks to ACPM Deep Water Group for the invitation to speak to you today. Before starting, I would like to acknowledge these people and these organizations for their help to carry out this research as well as share these research results with you. Let's get started. So as uh, Celeste talk about, uh, give a bit of context. So sediment gravity flows are the largest sediment transport agents on Earth. Yet these are the least understood ones. So they could carry significant amount of organic carbon from the shelf areas to these different deep sea uh, environments. Studies, observation from the modern fan systems such as Congo and Bengal sort of suggest that these different fan environments could be pretty efficient in sequestering large quantities of organic carbon as you can see in the chart on, uh, on the top left. And the amount of carbon that is buried in this system is, is, is sufficient to impact climate over the geological time scales. Conventionally, uh, uh, mudstone in these settings have been sort of considered as a, as a sink, but emerging evidence suggests that more sand-rich facies such as TB and TD divisions and turbidites can also store sufficient amount of organic material. Uh, Two really nice examples from the Bengal fan, from uh, Lee et al. and, and from the uh, Butte Inlet uh, in British Columbia, from Sophie Haig, where these TB and TD divisions are sort of uh, pretty efficient in storing organic uh, material. But deep water systems are sort of, are composed of many other flow deposits, like the ones that exhibit mixed sort of behavior or hybrid character. And in some sort of uh, in some settings, they they make a significant amount part of that sort of uh, 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 deep marine settings, such as uh, distal lobes. So, so understanding how these how organic carbon is sort of distributed, and what are what sort of impact of these burial processes can be on the organic matter is is is, is important to understand. So for this, uh, so how this uh, hybrid flow works is basically a sand bearing flow is carrying, acquiring a lot of mud and mud class. And this is sort of forcing distal flow transformation resulting in this deposition of these complex tier deposits that we call hybrid event beds. So this on the right, we can see this idealized hybrid event bed model produced by Houghton et al, where we have this, it says five parts to it. We have the basal H1 divisions, where we have, which is sort of a cleaner sand deposited by turbidity currents. We have H2 divisions, which is sort of composed of alternating bands of darker sand and, and uh, paler sort of layers deposited by transitional flow. We have this sort of take muddy sandstone and sandy mud divisions in place by blank debris flows. We have this H4 division, which is sort of structure sand a thin component of the flow deposited by low density turbidity currents. And then we have this uh, H5 divisions, the muds that are deposited from the suspension fallout. Looking at the these sort of structure of hybrid event beds, what we can see that, that it's a product of more than one flow process, but how these different processes impact the distribution, abundance, and burial efficiency of organic carbon. To address this, we, we have uh, studied Ross sandstone formation, which is an ancient tropical deep sea fan system exposed in the cliffs around the uh, Loophead and County Clare, west of Ireland. The reason to choose the Ross Formation was that uh, it has been drilled recently with the help of Equinor and a lot of fresh core material is available for the analysis. Secondly, the, the, it has been logged, so the cores have been logged in a lot of different types of hybrid event beds formed by different processes have been reported. So it's kind of a really test sort of uh, initial material to test uh, how how carbon can be buried by these different flow processes. And so uh, the bed inventory compiled on the basis of the uh, of the of the of the core is is that Ross is composed of turbidites and nine different types of hybrid event beds. Previously, Ross was thought that it is only composed of uh, turbidites, but but the core shows that uh, it it. it it is composed of other deposit types as well. And hybrid event beds form uh, about one third, so about 30% of, of this bed mix. Uh, what we did is we sort of, uh, these hybrid event beds occur at, uh, at a different stratigraphic interval. So what we did, and they can be grouped uh, into three different facies tracks. So at the basal part of the Ross, we can have this basin flow sheet system where these thick coarser grain 
sort of hybrid event beds are or have they deposit in, in these base and floor sheet sort of systems outboard of this man pen system and the lower os we have these more uh, muddier sort of hybrid event beds infer to be deposited in the outer fan frame sort of settings and then in the mid to upper os we have those thinner hybrid event beds deposited in more sort of mid fan distributive channel lobe system so we have analyzed uh, these different bed types from different environments uh, using petrography uh, organic geochemistry uh, and inorganic geochemistry as well. And what we can see is that H1 divisions are relatively organic clean in this hybrid uh, event bed types. And, and the, most of the organic carbon is like efficiently fractionated towards in the H3 divisions. So the organic, the, the carbon I stopped data shows that uh, organic more matter is mostly of uh, still rich. Another bed in the similar sort of settings uh, with H1 division absent, but a thicker H3 division, and what we can see is that sort of organic carbon content in H3 division is, is sort of increasing towards the back tops, towards the top of H3 division. Again, the similar sort of organic carbon, terrestrial. Further up in the system, uh, where we have these thinner hybrid event beds with, uh, with, with thinner H1 division and more sort of expanded mudstone caps, what we can see here is that the trend is more or less similar, very thin, uh, H1 divisions and then sort of organic carbon content increased towards towards the towards the towards the top, and organic matter remains the same. So it's just another hybrid bed from mid fin sort of settings. And what we can see here again, the more or less the similar type of trend: H1 organic clean relatively, H3 organic carbon content is relatively higher. It's increasing towards top of the H3. Oh, sorry. So it's just increasing towards top of the H3, uh, and sort of one of the interesting thing in this 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 hybrid uh, bed we can see is that organic carbon is is sorry, organic carbon content is more in H3 division than the cogenetic H5 division, and this trend has been observed in many beds. So sort of summarizing all of those uh, bed data from all of those bed types, what we can see is that H3 division. Uh, deposit uh, H3 division store more organic com carbon than their cogenetic H5 divisions, and we think we believe that this is due to because H5 division H3 divisions were rapidly deposited due to end mass freezing, compared to the H5 divisions which were slowly settling from the suspension. This is further verified. Uh, so what we have seen, one of the interesting thing in these hybrid bed H3 divisions is that a lot of that organic carbon is sort of encapsulated. Uh, within these clay flocks or aggregates. So perhaps when the flow, when flow began to flocculate, it, it sort of really uh, uh, dumped a lot of organic carbon with it. Sort of summarizing all of those results into these two sort of, two, two, in, into this cartoon is uh, that in turbulent flow, uh, the deposition is, uh, is incremental. So grain by grain deposition and then so Organic carbon is mostly accumulated towards top TD or TE divisions, which are, and, they, and these divisions are prone to resuspension, uh, reworking, and sort of to oxidation. While in co compared to these turbulent flows, hybrid event beds lock their organic carbon content into, into relatively lower tiers, such as you can see the H3 and H3 divisions. Uh, so we think that this, this, this sort of locking and this mechanism offers more protection in, uh, compared to the turbidites. So in conclusion, hybrid event beds can dis dominate distal lobe stratigraphy, but they are still underrepresented. Uh, sink, clay-driven flow transformation provide an efficient mechanism for, uh, for epidural. Encapsulation of organic carbon within clay flocks may prevent carbon degradation and promotes enhanced preservation. And one of the most important thing is that pro proportion of the hybrid beds should be considered while we, we estimate the carbon burial budget in the deep sea fan in the future. So with that, I thank you.